Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Former President Donald Trump making his return to the campaign trail and Michigan today, looking to build momentum coming out of his party's convention. Trump lost the state in 2020 after winning it in 2016. The rally drew a huge crowd to downtown Grand Rapids. It was Trump's first since the assassination attempt at a Pennsylvania rally one week ago. It was also the first time his newly named running mate, J.D. Vance, joined him at a rally. Our Jacqueline Francis spent the day at the event, and she joins us with more on the former president's message to Michigan voters. I've covered many Trump rallies this election cycle and last, and today you can tell there was a heightened security presence here, which is to be expected after last week's assassination attempt. Now, even with that heightened security, Trump still got his message out to voters as he and his running mate underscored the importance of winning Michigan this November. Trump is back on the campaign trail. This is like a Michigan football game over here. Stopping in Grand Rapids to a packed Van Andel Arena with a capacity of 12,000. With thousands and thousands, and I mean lots of thousands up here, this is a hell of an arena. Right off the top, Trump acknowledged the assassination attempt. It was exactly one week ago today, almost to the hour, even to the minute. The security in and out of the arena heightened. The Secret Service asked local law enforcement to assign more officers to secure the rally. This was Trump's first rally with vice presidential nominee and Ohio Senator J.D. Vance. I, I heard some OHs, but I'm going to respect Michigan and not respond here to my... To my Ohio brethren, guys, we got to win Michigan. That's the most important thing this election cycle. Michigan is seen as a must win state in the 2024 race. From Marquette to Midland, from Lansing to Flint, and from Detroit to right here in Grand Rapids. Trump drawing attention to uncertainty in the Democratic Party, taking a poll, asking the crowd who they want him to run against. We'll start with Kamala Harris, and then. And then we'll go, and then we'll go to Crooked Joe Biden, and then we could possibly discuss a few others. Often going off script, Trump spoke for close to two hours. To give you some context to the crowds we saw today, the line to get inside was hours long. It went through downtown and across the freeway. Reporting from Van Andel Arena in Grand Rapids, I'm Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. Thank you, Jacqueline. Today's visit to Michigan was all about getting votes. Michigan will play a key role in the next election. Both Trump and President Biden have already made multiple visits this year. Voters outside the rally say Trump already has their endorsements. I'm excited We're here um, for our president. We love him. I, I, I would take a, a bullet gladly anywhere in my body for that man. And I proudly would lay across the cement right now if that's what needed to be done. This was sad, sad, sad to see this. You know, that's, that's my point of view. Just sad to see this country falling apart and people that have been conned. That's, I've been conned before in my life. We've all probably been conned one time or another. Michigan has been a hard-fought state for Trump. He won the state by just over 10,000 votes in 2016. However, you may remember Joe Biden flipped it in 2020, winning by a margin of 154,000. Law enforcement was on high alert in downtown Grand Rapids. We heard from some supporters who say this was not their first Trump rally, but this time around the security detail was larger. The Secret Service did ask local law enforcement officials to assign more officers to secure the rally. Trump's team says it's rethinking where they will hold future rallies. At today's rally, former President Donald Trump distanced himself from the far-right conservative group and their playbook for a second Trump term. It's called Project 2025, and it was written by the Heritage Foundation. It's a 900-page plan on how to reshape the federal government. It calls for things like abolishing the Department of Education, 
cutting funding for climate research and eliminating coverage of emergency contraception. Trump has been caught on video voicing support for the Heritage Foundation in the past, but tonight he says he doesn't know anything about Project 2025. And they come up with this, pro I don't know what the hell it is, it's Project 25. He's involved in Project, and then they read some of the things, and they are extreme. I mean, they're seriously extreme, but I don't know anything about it. Michigan Democrats released a statement about Trump's visit. They said Trump will spread fear and make promises he never intends to keep, adding that Trump and Vance's policies will make life worse for Michiganders as they cut taxes for the wealthy and leave our middle class out to dry. President Biden is still off the campaign trail while he recovers from COVID. He tested positive for COVID last week. Biden's doctor says the president has completed his sixth dose of Paxlovid. It's a pill that's taken to treat COVID-19 and stop symptoms from worsening. He also shared that the president's symptoms continue to improve steadily. Residents gathered today at the Himmel Hole Apartments to express concerns about what they say are unsafe living conditions. Residents say new management has led to issues with leaks, mold, and insect infestations. Residents sent us photos of what appears to be mold on their walls. Tenants also say they have gone to city council for help and management has retaliated when bringing up concerns. One resident says all he wants is a safe place to live. We're not looking to do press interviews. We're not looking to uh, have all of this noise in our lives. We just want a safe, secure building to live in. The group is asking the city to take action against the building's managers to strip them of any cor corporate welfare. A section of the lodge is back open tonight after being shut down for about an hour by police. This was a scene around 715 on southbound M10 near Wyoming. You can see state troopers searching the freeway. We have calls out to police to figure out what the investigation was for, but we have not heard back yet. We will, of course, keep you updated. And while we wait, let's take a live look outside. All is quiet across Metro Detroit after a beautiful day, but a cold front is definitely moving our way, and that could push temperatures down. Ron Hilliard joins us now. Ron, we should stay dry, though, right? We do have a chance of some rain showers coming through in our area. And one of the things that we're going to be watching for out there is the chance of a couple of sprinkles as that front comes through. The good thing is, though, that most of us will be staying dry tomorrow. We're not gonna see much in the way of temperatures dropping out of that. Now, what we're seeing right now, temperatures are holding in in the 60s and 70s. With 61 in Port Huron, we're at 75 in the city of Detroit, and you go over toward Ann Arbor, 60 degrees. There's a lot happening this weekend, and it is gonna to continue to be dry out across the area. So. Very nice conditions as we head into the rest of the night as well as tomorrow. And if you are going to be going through activities tomorrow, one of the things you might be doing is going on the playground. The temperatures as we wake up tomorrow around 10 o'clock or as you start your day in the lower 70s, eventually we'll see those temperatures getting up into the lower 80s. So a great day to get out on the playground, a great day to also go down to the riverfront or any of the many festivals across the area. I'm gonna talk about those chances of rain that are in our forecast because they do exist. Thankfully, there's not a whole lot of rain left in our forecast though for this weekend. I'm gonna talk more about what to expect coming up.